Last week, the Senate Judiciary Committee passed a big tech antitrust bill on non-discrimination. The bill prohibits dominant platforms from discriminating against other businesses that rely on its services. Our next guest, Matt Stuller, notes that big tech probably spent tens of millions of dollars opposing this bill alone. Apple CEO Tim Cook and Google CEO Sundar Pichai even called senators personally to avoid the outcome. The committee voted 16 to 6 on a bipartisan basis, and virtually every senator conceded we have a massive monopoly problem with big tech. Some experts consider the bill the best chance Congress has at making substantial reform to laws that govern the industry. If passed, the bill would have significant implications for Amazon, Google, and Apple in particular. Author and director of research at the American Economic Liberties Project, the brilliant Matt Stoller joins us now to discuss the legislation further. Welcome to the show, Matt. So why don't you start by giving us an example of something the bill would address to help our viewers really understand what's at stake here. And then I want you to address the bipartisan nature of this, because I think that's really important. Sure. So if you go onto Google right now and you look up doctors, right, best doctors in my area, what you will find is Google will probably show you uh, doctors, like a Google Maps list of doctors and reviews on Google Maps. What they will not show you is what their natural algorithm would, would display, which is the best actual reviews, whether they came from, like let's say Yelp has better doctors or ZocDoc, better doctor reviews. Um, if the organic search result which looks at and which basically figures out what the best result is. If that is not what, uh, if that's uh, better than uh, on Google, what Google's own results show, they will still show Google's results first. And what this bill would do is it would say that that kind of behavior, which is known as self-preferencing, putting your own products ahead of your competitors, even when your products are inferior, is no longer allowed. And that's kind of what a lot of these big tech firms do to promote uh, their, to leverage market power from one area into another. The bill is kind of complicated. It's still moving through the process. It, there, there's, you know, there's a lot of sort of strange language in there, so courts could gut it. But that's the gist of the bill. And more importantly, I think it's part of a package of bills that are moving through and what is essentially happening is Congress is saying to the courts, we don't like the way that you have uh, interpreted antitrust law narrowly when it comes to big tech. And so as you judge a lot of the, the cases right now on big tech, and there are five cases against Google, several cases against Facebook, several cases, or one case against Amazon, uh, we think that you should I interpret antitrust law more expansively mm -hmm. and we're gonna potentially give you more tools to do that. Is this really so different, though, from like, you know, when you walk into the grocery store, they, I mean, the grocery store chooses what goes on what shelves, where, maybe they put their brand or their, their off-brand product more, Kirkland gets, gets top billing. I mean, they have limited space. They have to make that decision. Is like, you know, what Amazon does or what Google does so different in theory from that? No, it's not that different. I mean, there are a couple of, of distinctions. You know, the, the most important one is just market power, right? So you can go to multiple grocery stores and really, if you're gonna search for something, you're gonna search on Google. So if Google puts, you know, I mean, Google made the analogy that you made, but if Google puts something at, you know, on its shelf at eye level, everyone's gonna see that, right? That there is, there's just no other, I mean, there, there are a couple, you know, there are other search engines, but no one uses them or very few people use them. And, um, you know, something similar for uh, Facebook, similar for Amazon. So there's just a monopoly power question there, which there isn't as much for supermarkets. And then the other thing is that, um, you know, there, there are inventory costs for supermarkets where there aren't for, uh, for Google, for Amazon. You know, Amazon, when they self-preference their, uh, their own products, uh, over third parties, you know, what often will happen is a third party will invent some something cool and then Amazon will see, oh, this is a, this is selling and then they will just produce their own knockoff and put that at kind of shelf, you know, eye level. Um, and it's, but it's really the, the third, the third party producer of that good that had to take the risk of inventing that product of road testing it, of figuring out how to market it, and then Amazon comes in and sort of 
you know, skims, skims the cream. And uh, so what you're seeing is less and less product development on Amazon because of that. And self-preferencing is really the key to that. You don't really see that as much in the supermarket sector. You see it a little bit, but you know, when you're, when a, you know, when a supermarket is, um, is, is doing that, they still have to buy inventory for their own products. They have to incur costs. They have to buy inventory from the third party. Whereas you don't really see those inventory costs so there's just a lot more externalizing the the research uh, and development in the context of big tech than you, there is with the with supermarkets. But it's really just a market power question. So Matt, help us understand like how excited should we be about this bill for those of us who are very worried about the monopolistic power of big tech right now? Is this a sign that there's an appetite for taking this on? Um, you know, how should we how should we evaluate this? So I think I mean I think this bill is kind of like a modest. Uh, it's like a modest advance. Uh, it doesn't, there are some significant problems with it. Uh, it. It defers to regulators, it defers to judges, the language is somewhat vague. But what is important here is that the the vote was 16 to 6. And one of the, I think the, the, the core dynamic of Congress is that they can't do anything, right? No, everyone's just like, whatever, if we have to fix a problem and go to Congress, then that problem is not going to get fixed. This, in this case, the Senate decided, and this, this a bill like this has passed the House Judiciary Committee, the Senate decided overwhelmingly both parties, that was all the Democrats and then about half the Republicans, that they actually wanna do something about big tech. This opens the door to other bills. So there are gonna be other pieces of legislation that are gonna move through that are gonna handle different problems with big tech that are gonna make bringing antitrust cases easier, that may uh, address some of the privacy problems, that may address some of the abusive behavior towards uh, towards newspapers, towards app developers. So it's kind of, this is like a political wedge more than it is. Uh, I mean, I, I know a lot of people who are excited about the bill. We think the bill is kind of like a modest improvement. But the, the point here is that this is a political choice that the Senate is saying, you know, we want to actually address the problem of big tech. This is step one, but there's going to be others behind it. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, right? Because under existing um, kind of an the antitrust theory, right? It, it, it was always it, it was so um, harm to consumer facing or, or fo focused on that. And I think to, to a great extent, the the to, or to the extent we're seeing problems with you know quote unquote big tech, a lot of it is, is har It's harder to show the harm to the consumer. It, we're talking about the harm to the competitors, to the, to the smaller guys, the other people using the platform. Um, so I've argued that this, you know, if you want to make this case, you need a kind of like rethinking of what the law is and the theory of the law, like what we have now just doesn't kind of cover the cases that our people are upset about. Is this the kind of rethinking of the law to like accomplish that? Yeah, I mean, so, so just to your, your point is, I think that's the way that the debate is fairly is characterized. I would note that when you are looking for doctors and you find a doctor that's a like not as doesn't have as good reviews because you think that's the best. You know, you go into Google, everybody assumes Google is going to give them the best options, and then you get a worse option. That's harmful. That's harm to a consumer, right? Similarly, like Google got sends a lot of people to really bad rehab clinics um, for a variety of reasons. Like, there's a lot of harm happening here. It, it, what what the way that we interpret antitrust law is that you have to have a certain like segment of of economists quantify harm in a very specific way that's very expensive and difficult. But like the idea that, that we only focus on consumers and that's the point of the law is, is actually wrong. The law is just deferential to monopolists. That's all it is. And it puts power in the hands of economists to determine whether anything is going wrong instead of like common sense, which is, you know, if Google is, is sending you to worse results, then uh, you know, then there's actual harm going on. There's a competition problem it, itself. So, like, I just to just to sort of be clear, like the 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 debate is not over, you know, just whether it harms consumers because Google is harming consumers, Amazon is harming consumers. Um, the the question is kind of like burdens of proof and who gets to to, to determine that. Um, but yeah, this this kind of bill. I wouldn't say it's a rethinking of antitrust law. I think that um, you know it, it accepts a lot of, and this is why we're not that excited about it. It accepts a lot of the ideological conceptions of antitrust that the consumer welfare school does accept, and that, that that to us is a problem. That's why we look at this and we say this is kind of like a political mm. a political fight. Um, antitrust is a weird, incoherent area of law, 
And it kind of moves both through statutory changes, but also by enforcers bringing new cases and judges changing their mind. And that that's the that's the process that's happening right now. So like five years ago, they would have said, oh, consumer welfare is all about price. And today they say, oh, consumer welfare is about everything. It's about innovation and price and choice. And so even the kind of opponents are changing their mind, even though they don't realize it. So this is part of that process. But I wouldn't say that this law is a stark break from the kind of consumer welfare standard. It is a huge deal, though, to be clear, that Congress is actually considering passing changes that would make antitrust law stronger. That's a that's a big deal because that hasn't happened in a really long time. Well, Matt, thank you so much for joining us. Um, that was so interesting and helpful. And there will be more rising right after this. Thanks a lot.